Hey guys and girls, it's DC here and today I'm going to be talking to you about some frameworks in cybersecurity. Crazy! to write this list down because it's it's pretty extensive as you can see and um, I couldn't remember all of the information basically so I, I do apologize that I am going to be reading this off a piece of paper but bear with me it is useful information so jumping straight in to the first one which is the PCI DSS so the PCI DSS stands for payment card industry data security standards now I've written down here the origins of the PCI DSS lie with the major credit card providers which are Visa, Mastercard, Amex, etc. And um, these credit card giants were worried about credit card fraud and the increasing sophistication of the methods used to hack people's payment details. What resulted were separate standards brought out by each credit card body governing how merchants should store credit card details to ensure maximum protection. So those standards that were created in that policy are to build and maintain a secure network, obviously, protect cardholder data, you would hope so, maintain a vulnerability management program, yep, implement strong access control measures, yes, regularly monitor and test networks, which is, this is where my sort of job comes in doing uh, security audits. This is part of their regular maintenance and they can't do them only internally, they have to do them externally as well. They have to get external companies in to do it just in case the internal guys are just ticking the boxes. Uh, and the last one was to maintain an information security policy. So that's just the policy that everyone abides by um, when they're working in these security or IT teams with these secure PCI systems on them. Typical companies that use this are ones that are uh, doing payment processing through their, their own system. So if they're using their own sort of system, not just a gateway to process credit card information, they have to be PCI compliant. A lot of the time that is governments around the world, they all have to be PCI compliant because they accept multiple different cards through their own in-house built payment gateway. A lot of e-commerce sites um, have tried to do this in the past as well, but the world is sort of changing on payment gateways and now there's any number of payment gateways that you can use like Stripe or PayPal that will do all of this for you externally so you don't have to hold the risk and get a PCI compliance. Um, but that sort of depends on which country you're in to which laws that they hold uh, for your e-commerce site solution. The next one is the NIST framework for improving critical information security. So NIST stands for the National Institute of Standards and Technology. It was initially developed to be a voluntary risk-based framework to improve cybersecurity for critical infrastructure in the United States. It's a result of an executive order 13636 issued by President Obama calling for the development of a set of standards, guidelines and practices to help organizations charged with providing the nation's financial, energy, healthcare, and other critical systems better protect their information and physical assets from cyber attack. So it was, as I said, it was, it was created as an overarching framework to sort of look after everything at a really high level. Um, Obama was obviously concerned with different cyber attacks occurring and created this framework to help protect and create a standard across government uh, for everyone to sort of po follow and uh, keep their policies aligned to. A lot of the stuff in that one is actually repeated in the ISO, uh, which I'm going to talk about next. ISO 27001 and 27002. These are probably the most common ones around the world, um, just after PCI. It pretty much covers everything. It's used in every government in the world. And um, yeah, anyway, let's let's get into the standards here. So ISO stands for International Standards Organization. It covers everything. The ISO slash IEC 27,000 27, sorry, family of standards 
helps organizations keep information assets secure. ISO 27001 standard was published in October 2005, so it's a little bit aged, but it gets updated. Essentially replacing the old BS77992 standard, which is even before my time of being in cybersecurity. That was the, the original one, which didn't really cover anything. It is the specification for an ISMS, also known as an information security management system. Um, and itself, it was a long-standing standard first published in the 90s. This is the BS7799, of course. Uh, as a code of practice, as this matured, a second part emerged to cover management systems, and it is against which certification is granted. Today, in excess of a thousand certifications are in place across the world. It's huge. It's a massive standard um, framework, and it's... So the ISMS part that I was talking about before is essentially what I was doing before I got put into this SOC team lead role. I came in as an external auditor and they had an ISMS that they had to complete to stay compliant with government security standards in Australia. And I had to do a whole ISMS documentation as well as the security audit to show anything that uh, was missing from a compliance scale. So I had to do up a huge scale for them. And in that test, I basically went through their entire system, said everything that was wrong. And I was using these ISO and um, I didn't use the PCI one because I don't do any processing in this particular agency. Um, and yeah, it was, it was a huge document. It was hundreds of pages, but luckily I have a template so I don't have to write it all myself. And the government does also have their own special template that you have to uh, sort of abide by but yeah it's it's very popular but anyway the ISO 27002 standard was originally published as a rename of the existing ISO 17799 standard a code of practice for information security it basically outlines hundreds of potential controls and control mechanisms which may be implemented in theory subject to the guidance provided within ISO 27001. The standard established guidelines and general principles for initiating, next page, implementing, maintaining, and improving information security management within an organization. The actual controls listed in the standard are intended to address the specific requirements intended via formal risk assessment. I won't go on and read the rest because that it just goes forever and it's because it, it is like the the standard for security right so it, it covers so much the documentation is huge governments don't like doing it themselves because it takes their staff away from their everyday activities and uh, maintenance tasks so they usually employ external auditors like myself to come in and and do it and then sometimes to then complete the work that has been outlined in the standard which is exactly what has been done to me which is why i was put in this SOC team lead role um, to look over everything that the guys are doing and then push out all the changes that need to be done to them and basically make sure that they're doing it that's my life right now <laughs> the next one is another massive one you definitely would have heard of it is itil so itil stands for information technology infrastructure library and i'll just read the the description here itil describes processes procedures tasks and checklists which are not organization specific nor technology specific but can be applied by an organization towards strategy delivering value and maintaining a minimum level of competency it allows the organization to establish a baseline from which it can plan which it can plan implement and measure it is used to demonstrate compliance and to measure improvement so this one isn't specifically security but it's it's one of the most common frameworks in it if not the most common framework in it to abide by when you're going to an interview for a job you will almost definitely be asked are you aware of itil and you know do you do you have any certifications in ITIL or are you are you aware of it? Do you know what it is? Do you comply with it? Um, do you have any examples? It's it's pretty big and it, 
yeah, a simple yes, and then description of how you've used it in the past will get you through that interview, but I'm not gonna get into that in this video. The last one on my list here is the CIS Critical Security Controls. The Center for Internet Security Critical Security Controls for Effective Cyber Defense is a publication of best practice guidelines for computer security. The project was initiated early in 2008 as a response to extreme data losses experienced by organizations in the US defense industrial base and recently. The publication was initially developed by the SANS Institute. Ownership was transferred to the Council on Cyber Security or CCS and in 2013 then transferred to the Center for Internet Security, which is CIS, which was in 2015. This one is, um, again, very much a government security framework. However, a lot of other private industries do abide by this and will ask you about it in your interview. All you really need to know about this one is that it's similar to um, ISO 27001 and 2. Um, but it's a little bit more specific on uh, different areas on how to control your security systems. So it's, it's not just about how to control your environments, also how to control your security systems and the policies that follow those. So it's, those are the cybersecurity frameworks that I think are most relevant and definitely the most used ones. Um, if you like this video, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Uh, have a chat below in the comments if you like or jump on my discord server There's a link in the description Click on that and uh, yeah, I'll have a chat to you there until next time though guys. I'll see you there Catch you later Yeah, I'm wearing the same shirt. I recorded two videos in one day. What's up?